Hey everybody, so this is the first episode of the Foul Mouth Outdoors Management Minute. And today we're going to talk about checkerboarding. Um, out here on the property that I work on, we use it for quail hunting and burning. Um, so if you can see behind me, this is the sun out, the broom straw isn't too bad. But what checkerboarding does is it gives us a path through the broom straw and the brush and whatnot so we ever whenever we're hunting it's easy for us to walk in but also it gives the dogs a little bit easier time to get up and down the rows and whatnot also it's helpful when you plant a wildlife plot like this yeah i'm six foot and i'm not even getting nowhere close to the top of this um and this particular plant is called tosiente uh, i'll probably do another video about it later on but if I didn't checkerboard this, it would be nearly impossible to get the dogs in here and or cubby a quail out. Um, it just makes life a whole lot easier when we're trying to hunt. It doesn't matter if you're doing put and take, uh, early release, or if you're hunting wild birds. Checkerboarding definitely will help you be more successful when quail hunting. Uh, I know some people don't like to do it because they say it makes their dogs lazy. Well, we're not in the business of selling dogs. The ones we got are the ones we hunt with, and we want them to do, have the best advantage possible when they're hunting. Um, so roughly, whenever I'm, I, I use a tractor with a, a brown tree cutter, and we'll show that in a little bit. My checkerboards are roughly anywhere from 40 to 70 feet wide and roughly the same um both directions some of them might be a little bit longer some of them might be a little bit shorter and generally the rule of thumb is the thicker the cover the narrower your checkerboards need to be the more open the cover you can get a lot bigger with your squares and that's mainly just because it's easier for the dogs you know to work in if it's thinner they don't mind going but if it's you got a thick sweet gum patch go right through the middle of that sucker you know make make your rows pretty tight also later after quail season whenever i'm burning if i got a spot that i need to strip off instead of just ringing it and let it go you know it's a lot easier for me to ride the buggy or for me to walk up and down these rows on the end that i need to get it to burn you know get the fire away from one corner versus another one one thing that I've learned when doing this checkerboard is if I start earlier in October and I got a, say, I got a sweet gum patch that's so thick that I know birds are not going to use it because later on in the year, the leaves are going to fall off of it. Go ahead and cut that thing down with a bush hog. Do whatever you got to do to get it cut down. Um, I'm in South Carolina, so my growing season is a little bit longer you cut those what i found is if you cut those sweet gums down early enough they'll re-sprout well in the fall next year whenever you're trying to burn you're only burning a sweet gum sprout that's this big versus one that's 10 15 feet that fire will kill that small sweet gum a lot easier and it'll kill that bigger one and i've had really good success with sweet gum patches not coming back near as strong as if you just bush hog them you know, in, in the spring or whatever, after you burn, whatnot. So one thing that I like to do when I'm checkerboarding is if, let's say I have two roads that are over 300 yards apart, rather than cutting the whole way across it, I'll just cut three widths wide beside the road. Cause with the way I feed, I feed from the road. So I have a long feed trail around the whole property. So there's really no need to go out into farther than what I can feed because we want to hunt the quail right wherever we feed them. And I'm trying to inlay some pictures over that so you kind of get an idea of what it looks like from above. Um, but other than that, that's what I've learned in the past couple of years from me checkerboarding and us being successful quail hunting with it. So thank you all for watching and tune in next time for another Management Minute. Thank you.